Good afternoon, everybody. Let's go ahead and take a deep breath before we do anything. Sending lots of love and blessings out to you guys. Hope you've been having a great week. So I want your mantra to be, I am healthy, I am happy, I am beautiful, I am abundant. Okay, I have, a, I have a union read for you guys and a twin flame read today. Some really beautiful messages came out. I had to deal with, sorry about all the delays, and I'm, I never got to Aquarius and Pisces in my astrological reads for the, for the months, because I usually do them twice a month. So I'm just going to do Aquarius and Pisces first, going into May. So I'll, I'm going to try to get them done today after this read. So Aquarius... Pisces and then Aries will be the first three going into May, those energies. So first of all, the pictures of my reads for the, for the union read, the 4D, the 5D, 6D horizontally, the feminine coming in, the divine masculine going out, the underlying energies and the closing energies here. Vertical is the left is the feminine, the right is the masculine, and the bridge between is in the middle. And then here is the read in front of you, the main cards from the Syrian Starseed deck. And then the full read in front of you, so you can have an aerial view of it. Okay. Okay, so let's get right into the first read. So again, yesterday I was just dealing with a lot of computer issues, and there was a big lesson about that regarding not only knowing when to walk away from people who trigger you, but things like cars and computers. Know when to walk away and allow spirit to take care of the rest. They will always guide you to your next step if you let go. As soon as you start getting frustrated, time to take a step away, okay, and just let it be. Maybe you need to sleep on it. Maybe the, the energies just need to shift. Maybe some new information that you were missing comes in to let you know so you don't you never have to stay in that frustrated energy. You need to let go. So that was a main message that was coming up. The union read was done at 308, which is the three of the Empress, the eight of the strength card, but also the 38 of the Queen of Cups, who's been very significant this week. Um, when I first put out the union read, I wasn't sure if I was going to go with it because I was still a little uh, headachy from doing the, the computer challenge that I had yesterday. Um, but it, but I was guided to continue with this read, and this was going into today's energies, the 24th. So today is the 24th. Yesterday was the 23rd when I did this, which is the King of Wands, and the King of Wands is also coming up as very significant. And it added up to yesterday, the Six of Wands, which is the journey, 32, this is the uh, Six of Wands, and the King of Wands, so a lot of, of that passionate, aggressive energy yesterday. But the King of Wands in this deck, the Syrian Darcy deck, is very shaman-like. Um, but he was in, in reversed energy, the King of Wands. Going into today, he was in the upright energy. So there was a shift for the King of Wands from yesterday to today. So since we had 23 and 32, which are the reflection of each other yesterday, the King of Wands and the journey, right, his own reflection, Today, we're going into the 24 of the Queen of Wands and the 33 of the Christ vibration, the Seven of Wands, and needing to stand up for yourself without getting defensive and knowing when to walk away, of course. So the underlying energies for this union read started with the Five of Pentacles. Guidance is in the middle, and Page of Cups was at the end, and the Guidance card is like the Hierophant. So we have this feeling left out in the cold energy with the Five of Pentacles. In this deck, it's the the hermit without their light in the Mary Magdalene cave above the crowd, about above the group that they've been exiled from. She in her higher timeline than the group. 
So the Hermit in the Mary Magdalene Cave, searching for guidance, which was really funny to me because I was dealing with Apple and YouTube yesterday and looking for guidance, at the foot of the Sphinx and the Buddha overlay. And they, they keep coming up this week. And the Mother Mary stone beside them and the dear one behind them. So however that resonates for you, take it. But the deer was coming up. It was so weird yesterday. I was looking at the, the Hierophant card, which is the guidance card in this deck. And it has a picture of Buddha with the Sphinx behind them. And as I'm looking at it, I was looking at my Buddha over here, the little dark Buddha behind the card. You can't see him very well. But you know, the Buddha has several different positions, right? And as I'm looking at the card, I was guided to look straight at my Buddha right there, which was the exact same position that was in the Hierophant card here. And so, okay, so if that's the Buddha they're showing me in the card, and the Sphinx is behind the Buddha, then what's behind my Buddha? Which ended up being, which you can't see in this field of view, but I have a, uh, a deer over there. See the deer by the flame in the background? That deer was coming up as the Sphinx. And of course here, the Buddha has my stone from the south of France, the Mother Mary stone. She, that's why I picked it up because it looked just like Mother Mary. It was funny too, because someone in the group with me said the same exact thing. But we have Mother Mary next to Buddha and then next to the deer is the, the twin flame, right? So we have something about the deer that was coming up regarding the Sphinx. I'm, saying, I'm like, okay, well, what the heck is that supposed to mean? So, Okay, and then as soon as I finished writing that down about the deer and the Sphinx relationship, I was getting doe a deer. I'm like, okay, they're trying to tell me something about the feminine side of the Sphinx, which is the deer. So I looked up Sphinx deer to see what, if any relationship there was, because the, normally the Sphinx isn't described with deer in it at all. S certainly several other animals and perhaps the ox as well, which is the year of the ox right now. But as soon as I went to type in Sphinx deer, it typed in Sophinx deer, like Sophia, Sophinx deer, and I was cracking up then, and this is all from en.wikipedia.org, and um, the Purushamriga, Purushamriga came up, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but that's okay, um, which means man beast, is the, in, the Indian Sphinx with deer hooves, so in some of the statues, there are actually deer hooves in the Sphinx instead of claws. Examples from Thailand, which brought up, this was so weird, when I was young, my mother was part of AFS and she had AFS students stay at our house. Uh, we didn't do it all the time. I just remember a couple years that we did it. But we had, would have several students stay at our house at one time. And the one year, there were, we had Saman Pan, who was from Thailand, stay with me. And he was 18 at the time, I was 10. And he promised me he'd come back to marry me. <laughs> So it was so weird because when I wrote this yesterday, I thought about him um, and I haven't thought about that in years, right? So it was so weird that it came up and now here the deer hooves in Thailand was coming up and um, Thailand, but also a few with the deer hooves in South India. So then the Azure Vida came up is 1914, page 452. In Sanskrit, the Mriga, M-R-I-G-A, equals deer, not necessarily lion. So it can be multiple definitions. But in, it looks like in the Indian and Thai energy, it is more of the deer than the lion, the deer or the antelope. Um, and the ox somewhat comes up too as questionable whether it's part of the Sphinx or not. And of course, there's different comments here on the website talking about this stuff. So the traditional Greek Sphinx were actually ears of a donkey with wings or a different tail, not the tail that they show or, or a tail at all. But the original Sphinx was actually had wings and had ears of a donkey and a different tail. So the face and the breast of the woman also come up as mythicized as treacherous and merciless feminine energy. The Sphinx, um, there was some energies regarding the Mason's viewpoint on this. 
and the Hebrew word T-S-A-P-H-A-N means to hide. And in Greek, the strangler, sphinxes or sphinges, it's spelled differently. And then the Greek plural, or even sphinxen. So here's the S-P-H-I-N-X-E-N, which I was getting with the sophinx, you know, the, like the vixen energy. So then in Thailand, they're called noranair or norsing. Um, the deer or lion, but they also come up in not only one, but masculine and feminine pairs of the Sphinx. And this is msy-minds.com. So there's, of course, the Sphinx has a protective function and inhabits ranges of the sacred mountain, Hamepan, which then brought up Samanpan again, which I just told you about. And then actually that the the oldest statue, the Erignancian, the Erignancian, um, Sir Frau Goddess, is 32,000 years old, but another website said it was 40,000 years old, which is actually an erect sphinx. The oldest known um, anthropomorphic statue was known as Lion Man. She has a human female body and a lioness head. And there was a comment about Casey, too, that said the Sphinx was built in 10,500 BC by Atlantis survivors and that the Hall of Records entrance was at the right shoulder. And again, they go into the calculations of the golden mean around the Sphinxes that it actually goes right over the right shoulder of the Sphinx, which is supposed to be the entry point. And then, of course, there's talk about the, the Akashic Records actually being in the, in the right paw. So Casey predicted the opening of the Hall of Records, 1996 to 98, by certain chosen people. And he had said that all relative to their level of consciousness of humanity at that time, which we all understand now, and that you had to be ready to receive this information. Um, some, some also said here, if the Sphinx was meant to be a lion, then the Sphinx should have been on the other side of the Nile relating to their, the connection from Egypt to the constellations that the origins of Mesopotamia and not ancient Egypt. And there was this connection it, the, with the Milky Way as opposed to Orion. And then uh, Melchizedek's were being brought up there too, but I didn't get too much into that. So going back to the read, the five of pentacles into the middle card of the guidance of the Sphinx, the deer and the Buddha, and the page of cups innocent, right? The deer brings up that innocent energy with their heart open wide, you know, doe-eyed, okay? So that innocence of the deer. They forgot to add the innocence and spirits connecting with me. The incoming divine feminine is the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. Hiding, trying to feel her way through in the woods when coming down to the 4D dimension in possible drama, with possible drama. The Knight of Wands lurking there, showing up to receive downloads with two on the ground watching, perhaps. The 4D energy here is the Ten of Wands, Alchemy, and Strength with the Divine Feminine, leaving the wounded warrior behind, the anxiety, the dealing with computers and, and cars and triggers of people and letting go, leaving the wounded warrior behind and coming back up from the dungeon with flame in hand, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The Divine Masculine is the strong tiger through the Ring of Fire, and there's a very important message from the Twin Flame read today regarding the same thing. So stay tuned for the twin flame read as well. The strong tiger through the ring of fire, chomping at the bit on how to approach this. Bridging between them with patience and balance, or in other words, a higher love. And this is in the 4D, right? The higher love would be then more 5 or 6D. The 5D here is the nine of swords, guidance, and the reason, which is the emperor. The divine feminine stressed, but relieved to be above ground, not in the dungeon, the Divine Masculine, the Emperor, or the Reason for adding AI on fire to an already raging fire, bridging with guidance, Akashics, and Buddha, committing to self. In the 6D is the Star, the Six of Pentacles, and the Knight of Pentacles, the Divine Feminine Rock Star Healer or Tour Guide of the Atlantis con Constellations, her higher self guiding her when she's feeling alone. It's like um, the Egyptian saying, come on, this way, over towards the masculine side. The divine masculine being the loyal, humble servant, proposing with crystal light, or Greece, 
and then uh, grease lightning comes up from the movie grease as well. So with the proposing crystal light or grease, right, the grease, greasing the wheel to make it work better, bridging with guidance to lighten the load so not so much to carry. In other words, helping each other out to carry the load. The divine feminine is burdened by stress, but grounding to leave it behind and rise to the stars. The divine masculine breaking through with the emperor, sending clues from the 5D so he can offer something in the 6D. The bridge here is patience, alchemy, guidance, sharing, and balance. That's your bridge. The outgoing divine masculine is the outpouring of love to the divine feminine's heart. In the E tower, the energy tower, the higher self in the plasma ethers with their heart innocent and wide open. So again, the energy of the doe eyed deer. Doe a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun is the masculine. Oh, so now they're building on my definitions of do re mi fa so. So the doe is being the doe eyed innocent one, the feminine energy. The, de the um, ray is the masculine golden sun. And then me, right, is the God energy. Me, my name, I call myself. I am that I am. And then fa, a longer way to run, okay, for the Trinity. And Trinity comes up in the masculine read as well. So this read comes out to the number 53, which is the Knight of Swords, the Messenger of Truth, the Knight in Shining Armor, the catapult energy of Grease Lightning. Actually, 5 and 8 are supposed to be Grease Lightning, and 5 and 3 are close, is close behind. But 5 and 8 is that, it's the power, it's, it's the lightning and the thunder. The 8 is the thunder, the 5 is the lightning that strikes. Right, the movement, the excitement, and the sound is the eight, you know, the bellowing, the strength, the inner strength. And the five and the three is more of, um, it's light, it doesn't have that strength. It's, um, it's more like the lightning striking, whereas the, five is like the energy, not just the lightning, but the, en the whole energy, the love energy coming from the sound to reach out. So the horizontal pillars here were 11, 9, and 33, 11 of justice, 9 of the hermit, 33 of the seven of wands, the Christ energy. The, heart, the uh, vertical pillars were 13, 7, 19, 6, 1, and 7. So the messages coming up from these and the 53 being the overall number of the Knight of Swords and the Divine Feminine having Aquarius and Sagittarius on her side along with the Knight of Wands the masculine having Aries, Sagittarius, and Pisces on his side, along with the Knight of Pentacles and the Page of Cups, the innocent one. We have a message of justice of the hermit, standing up for the truth and rushing in with it. And then the dark night transitioning, ascending with the chariot to the sun, the lover's dream, or the knight in shining armor, coming in as the messenger of truth. All right, so that was the union read, going right into the, the uh, twin flame read, which was, which was cut and dealt with the Syrian Starseed deck at 752, 6.52. Take a deep breath. At 6.52 is the lovers and the queen of swords. The lovers and the two of cups were both upright in this read, but the queen of swords was reversed. Um, the... At 6.59, which is the six of the lovers and the 59 of the five of swords, is off to the 11th hour, right? 59 is the moment before 60, before the hour, the stroke of midnight or noon, high noon. The lovers at the 11th hour, and then crystals came up again, which is being Christ-like. And the LS was coming up as well, right? The, this can be the Lou and the Sophia, right? The dark and the light. And then we finish clarifying this at 11.11, uh, 11, going into 11.12, which is, again, the 11th hour. And the wisdom of it, seeing a new perspective, the shift. So the major arcana here were star, strength, and luna. Before the read was transition of the death card, dark night, transformation and transition, the end. And then we had reason, which is the emperor. After the read, the indigo or magician came up. And in this deck is a very young energy of a magician holding like a huge diamond in an offering. 
We have the three pentacles, one cup, three wands, and one sword. So you notice it's 3131 here, which is the five of wands, that expansion, the conflict, the fighting, but also the games, the acting, and the pursuit of happiness. We have the king of cups and the king of wands here, two kings. And before the card was the page of pentacles, which also can be an opportunity or an invitation. We had the numbers, we had triple twos and triple threes today. Very much about the feminine energy with the high priestess and the empress, but also the mediation energy of the two, right? One on one. And then the three being a third party or coming together in joy, or is it third party interference, right? There's always a dark and a light side. We also double fours of the grounding, integrating, and mastering of love, which is that Four of Cups card of boredom and apathy. And then we have the 78 of the Ten of Pentacles. And so 222, two, 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 333, three, three, and 333 came up yesterday too. 44, 1234, shut the door. The first quarter I was just getting. But this is the last quarter as well. Depends on your perspective. Are we dealing with four totally? Right? Or are we dealing with 16, which would be four quarters, or even the first half going into five through nine. So the 78, which is the 10 of pentacles, and then the 12 of the hangman, 34 of the eight of wands, 47 of the seven of cups, 23 of the king of wands again, and then the 46 of the children in the garden, the two loving each other. So the code line here is all about abundance, personal growth, and environment. And the messages were coming up regarding seeing support of the two expanding and contracting. And instead of Christmas, it was coming up as two miss or twin miss. Three being strong in the dance of woe. Okay, and there's that three and eight again of the Queen of Cups. Three of the Empress, eight of the strength. Coming together in the three of cups, or the Queen of Cups, who's very intuitive, loving, and kind, and doesn't need power, you know, that kind of power of control over others. So the three, eight dance of abundance, personal growth and environment, and then to sow or scatter seeds is not lucky. Twin miss taking the high road in energy and strength. The 82 is coming up here and as opposed to the, to the 28, which is the twins, the choice of path, 82 is coming up as the reflection of that. The path being chosen for you as in an arranged marriage. Abundance, personal growth, and environment. Um, and I was watching some episodes of the, Crown, of the Crown last night, which I haven't done that in a long time. But literally when I was writing this, I was watching Charles and Diana come together. So that was very interesting. And again, the arranged marriage, right? Having your path chosen for you. To sow or scatter seeds. Also the clover and the shamrock were coming up, right? The luck of the draw. And then um, I started doing the read at 1221. The Ace of Pentacles reversed. So the Ace of Pentacles reversed starts the underlying energy for the read. Over here, this card on the bottom and then the mini cards on top. And going five cards down from the bottom up was the Four of Swords upright, Transition reversed, Page of Pentacles upright, Six of Swords upright, and Reason, or the Emperor, reversed. So great riches here, the, the Ace of Pentacles reversed can be the evil side of wealth, or, you know, great riches, like who needs that much money, right? So great riches and the evil side of wealth, after resting or being on break, quiet time, meditation, being alone, not transitioning well, the Page of Pentacles being upright, the innocent student finding peace without the logical man, withholding who's, who may be withholding money or time, money, and effort, sharing or settling out with the emperor reversed, announcing and receiving the crowds. And that's definitely that energy of, you know, the wealthy man or the famous man, um, like, you know, Charles in the, in the crown, you know, just going home on his daily route and waving to the crowds, right? So here font reversed, coming up as anti-establishment or divorce, right? A break away from anything like a religion or societal norms or anything that's traditional or um, the, something very committed. The page of swords holding back their words. 
the patient angel implementing a plan. As we go into the Ten of Pentacles, the family, business, community, or the world at large, and the dreams to come true, destined to be the hermit, holding the light for the King of Pentacles reversed, who may be praying here at 1248, which is the wise man, the hangman, trying to see a new perspective, and then the 48, knowing when to walk away from within. Two sides of the lead man, faceless except when alone, contemplating taking his life perhaps, or living as a greedy man. The injustice of healing and forgiving, the six of cups, soul tie, the inner children loving each other, wanting to end the battle, going belly up, or just their own belly up, with flowers out, and overboard. So I always think of Goldie Hawn when overboard comes up. So new love comes up here. And it's like, uh, maybe they're giving us the energy of Goldie Hawn from overboard. Because remember in that movie, that when she went overboard, she lost her memory. So it's like, the, um, it's like having a block to your higher self so that you can't come together until, until the time is right, the divine timing, right? She lost her memory in order to become a different person, right? She was grounded on the island with Kurt Russell and she had to literally become a whole different person and then she awakened after she'd gone through the dark night of the soul. So it's like there's that block there. It's kind of relating to the masculine journey where he wasn't allowed to know until the end. Just like Goldie Hawn didn't know what was going on. She just thought she was in this bad situation. So new love, and that can go both ways for the feminine and the masculine. So new love comes up here, but beneath it, keep an open mind. The here font reversed. The third of the red coats down here, it's like the patriarchy falling, with the emperor reversed in this bottom line, the justice reversed in the hierophant, and I'm going to show you where they are, just so you know. So the emperor's reversed right here, here's the justice reversed, and then here's the hierophant reversed. So all the red coats reversed. The deception of the queen of cups reversed. The injustice of putting it all out there. Or two feminines unhappy, cancer reversed and Libra reversed. Or the queen of cups reversed, who's being, whose very sweet person is being held down while the other shows off in public. No dainty bare feet, only bare butts allowed. And this has to do with innocence versus, you know, putting it out there too much. The polarities of sexuality being pure versus being the whore, right? So the bunny and dove wondering why what's good for the goose isn't for them. So this also can be um, you know, parents who say one thing but do something different, like a mother being very sexual, but then making her, her children very pure, like not allowing them to dress in anything but very conservative clothes, and yet she'll go out with cleavage down to her belly button because she'll say, but I'm married, so I'm allowed to. It's kind of that energy coming through, but being, you know, contradictive. So, but again, the bunny and dove coming up as the young, innocent energies, Wondering why what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander, right? Narcissistic hierophant reversed, touching things he shouldn't be. And again, this could be a tainted religious leader at 110, which is the magician and the wheel of fortune. And then creativity comes up and beneath that pride. And again, this could be stuff from childhood that are coming up for some people to clear, you know, any kind of abuse from a religious person or a parent or an uncle or an aunt, anything like that. So we had the King of Pentacles reversed, the star, or being with your dreams, released from fears, anxiety, prison, the patient angel with a secret passion, the stubborn King of Wands reversed with twinkle toes, Aquarius upright, Sag upright, and Pisces reversed here. So, and that can, re it does not just have to be the feminine showing off their sexuality in a, in a family situation and the kids getting the wrong idea. It could be the father as well. It can go both ways. And that also can relate to tempers, not just sexuality, but having a bad temper, but then, the, you know, God forbid the kids should react the same way. So 116 is the magician and the 16 of the tower. The king of pentacles reversed and the page of pentacles reversed. Here's that father and child energy right? Where they're two of a kind, but they're both negative, right? So we had the King of Wands reversed, withholding a new life or time, money, and effort. 
perhaps sleeping on it and praying for help in a losing battle with flirt or being creative. Um, the underlying energy being here, um, a big codependency, whether it's addiction or codependency, um, being on fire, there's a lot of sexuality coming up in this card, and separation, receiving a load after the slave is apart from their master or the devil slave driver. Okay, and then the, it's like that um, PTSD of not understanding or being confused and wanting to go back to your abuser because the energy of being in that uncomfortableness of being confused and not knowing where to go and the illusion of what's real makes them feel so uncomfortable that they go back to their abuser again. So the recent energy here is the three of wands reversed, the past being a burden, the atlas weight of the world on their shoulders and the knight of cups reversed, the page of cups reversed, and the king of pentacles reversed, looking back at the world or just li living in the past and being in this world. A Pisces or sealed divine feminine here. They could be looking back at this person as well. The devil made me do it may be their excuse as the emperor's reversed and the ten of swords upright dealing with pain in the ass or a betrayal, a deep betrayal, lovers out in the cold, recovering but weak. The foundation being the king of cups upright, unconditional love, on the journey to meet their twin or have a discussion perhaps. The queen of wands upright receiving an offer of love from the thief just trying to get out of something or get away with something or they may perceive it as such. The central energy is the star in the dreams Healing and coming together to co-create, letting go of the past unhappiness of the King of Swords reversed, standing up for himself. The challenge being weakness, illness, tired, or losing their edge. In a losing battle with the High Priestess reversed, secret passion, or 5D connection and walking away, unable to understand. The Empress upright in a heated exchange, recovering the Empress and the King of Cups both upright, back into the fold, but doing it by being weak, right? They're coming back into the fold with someone they shouldn't be coming back into the fold with because they're abusive. Healing the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Swords reversed. Queen of Wands is upright, Queen of Swords is reversed. So we have fiery, fiery energy upright for the feminine and air sign energies for the Queen of Swords reversed. Obsessed and the Queen of Swords reversed may be obsessed about unstable home life or both of them are, they could be sisters, with the Emperor reversed and no sunshine. And that could be vacation as well. The emperor reversed, drained by the empress upright, overworked or not working, or it's just not working out. The queen of swords reversed, leading the way and carrying on, even though she's very hurt or deeply hurt or scorned, perhaps trying to keep her words to herself or just in negative self-talk as well. The, the um, now moment here, crowning is the two of swords upright, knowing and doing nothing or keeping to yourself, or pretending not to know, right? It can be two sides of the same coin. Are you doing it for the good, or are you for doing it in a, in a lie type of way? The king of wands is upright, recovering the fool, who's free to leap out of their chains and bond or bondage, perhaps of another, the king of wands reversed, or their evil twin. This could be literally two brothers who are twins. Um, the knight of swords reversed, holding their tongue, Dumping emotional attachments, no longer confused. Peace of epiphanies, destined post-war. Ending the nightmare, the stress. And the king of pentacles reversed, who could just be ungrounded and having a bad day. Or he could have lost a lot of money and status. Or he could be the evil side of wealth, right? All about the money and doesn't give a crap about anyone else. But the king of pentacles reversed is coming up as drained in need of sun or sunshine. The sovereign man with two lovers who messed up in betrayal or in an ending of pain or back treatments. Deception of the two of cups lovers, twins, or frustrations of withholding and not burning the past, the purge. The fantasy family hanging out with temptation, waving in their face or their own abusers. Or somebody with double Capricorn here. Soon as the eight of pentacles reversed whether it's overworking, not working at all, or just not working out, the King of Cups with Pisces in their chart, meditating and going within or taking walks. It doesn't have to be a Pisces here, but it definitely can be. Frustrated and thus surrendering, 
with Sovereign and Page of Pentacles, which can be two teenage kids or older kids, and the Queen of Cups and Page of Wands, both reversed, also frustrated or uninspired here. And the Page of Wands can just reference her frustration. The Magician's Upright, or magically manifesting and offering love. When parents feel down, it's like the kids are stepping up. Kids, your own kids, young workers, um, or friends of the family. It's like the younger generation is all of a sudden realize when the parents are having a hard time, they're stepping up to the plate, right, to be love or to help. So, or when the Queen of Cups reverse is frustrated, offering magic and love to kids or from kids or students, or when she's feeling bad, to offer her love to the kids or students or younger workers or friends in order to transmute or transform her own energies at 1236, which is the hangman and the 36 of that 10 of, of wands, the, the Atlas energy. So when you're feeling the weight of the world, again, it's about extending your heart to love another. So the twin flames are coming up here at 1236, the hangman and the Atlas energy seeing themselves as the twin flames, the two of wands, presenting the truth to loyal fools, and I say fools in a positive way, those with open hearts to help free them when they're broken, stuck, fight or flight, anxiety, in fear or in prison, literally, or having an unstable home or life in order to find self-happiness by using your special tools to make your magic with the Queen of Pentacles being down to earth and grounded, very comfortable, and yet knows its worth, that love energy is the actual abundance, not the money. The triumphing over negative energy to become the triumphant magician, the magi, with the Queen of Pentacles fool, allowing yourselves to be authentically you, getting to know each other and letting go of control issues and flirt. Around the twins is the um, king of wands upright, the shaman, in a meeting of the minds, standing up to others, protecting the connection, and finding peace away from what's not working when you're falling short on energy or your own expectations. And that can be as simple as expecting to be able to fix your computer today and letting go of that. So when you start to get frustrated, you drop it and know that there's um, another way that's easier. So the challenge being the Luna or the Moon reversed around deception and confusion and illusion by shedding light on it and frustrations and letting go of holding on, the attachment, but not resisting either, allowing the flow to guide you with a green environment, personal growth and abundance. So when you have car issues, computer issues or any kind of issue, if you're broke, broken, broke down, broke up broke in, got broken in, or actually had a breakthrough, or feeling like you're in a state of emergency or fight or flight triggers you. It's time for a break, quiet time, no thinking, surrender, allow, go with the flow and let the universe decide what's next and then inspire and guide you. The fantasy family comes up here, the abundant dream girl, the empress not working with man who's working, with the Queen of Swords reversed, silenced, on the journey and taking the lead. The surrender to your own knowingness and floating on air. With the Ten of Pentacles, family, business, community, or world at large. Heaven on earth and that secret passion. The need to use your intuition. The surrender to the Three of Pentacles. And in this deck, it's literally called Trinity. Wisdom and the shadow side. The temptation of co-creation. Pisces and Capricorn, or double Capricorn here, I was getting double tree as well, clinging to wrongdoing between the lying, cheating, stealing, and running energy of the dark night reversed and the knight of pentacles reversed, grounding and integrating, coming together, or a group ignoring them, dismissing their offer of love as a twin flame couple, even their own community dismissive of them. So again, this can be the masculine and his family or business um, finding that they're being dismissive of them or betraying them. And then the feminine finding her own twin flame community dismissive of them or betraying them. 
I mean, it doesn't have to be those two specific communities, but just as an example. And this is at one o'clock, which is the magician and the source energy of double zeros, right? The human embodiment of source backing up the one of the magician embodiment. Yet those two that are so accepting and loving, even when you know you've been talking too much with scattered, ungrounded thoughts or words, the surrendering to come together to make magic as indigos, the phoenix rising to tango with their flame in hand, healing and forgiving the divine masculine coming out of the bad cave and the queen of swords reversed healing by keeping to herself and keeping her energy clear. Or the queen of swords reversed could be an Aquarius or she just has big dreams that she's keeping to herself to keep the energy clear. So after a peaceful transition, the page of pentacles upright finding making peace or traveling away from so finding peace or making peace or traveling away from the emperor reversed who's in a negative energy perhaps somebody with great riches or tainted great riches or withholding their time money and energy from the king of cups upright the twin flames and the king of wands upright the shaman right they're all very positive energies the king of cups is unconditional love the twin flames and then the king of wands shaman or choosing a path together from the past or looking back at stardom and dreams healing or the dreamer and the healer which can be the king of cups and the king of wands and they can also just represent the mastering of emotions and the mastering of passions at a 111 here which is the magician and justice which is truth and balance so the challenge being here there's very much that energy of light and profound love all at the same time you know, keeping it light, but you keeping it profound all at the same time. Light and sound. <laughs> I love how they bring this stuff together. It's so cool. All right. 112, the magician and the wisdom of the hangman, trying to see new perspective. Challenged by weakness, illness, or just needing courage and the strength to break through that ring of fire. Atlantis and Lionsgate, the portal between July 23rd and 8-8. The strength to face what's not working, the deception, the confusion, the illusion, and be in your knowing now and surrender to Trinity. Did you ever notice that Trinity is literally broken down to try, nigh, and ty. Try, show of power, and thank you or show gratitude to make magic and rise like a hot air balloon. Try, nigh, tie. Try, show your power, and say thank you. <laughs> Instead of spouting all that hot air, allow that hot air to fill you like the balloon and cause you to rise, heal, and forgive, and be love as the Divine Masculine in the pat bat Cave opens his heart. The shadow of money and living in the past with the King of Wands reversed and the King of Cups now unconditionally loving star in their knowing, challenged by the tiger fire within. And this is the, the tiger's feminine. So I went into the animal spirit guidebook to see what came up for the tiger because it was very profound here. And the white Bengal tiger is in that card of breaking through the ring of fire. So it's very significant for us. So I went into the book to see what that page said about the tiger. And it comes up as the lunar force, the divine feminine, the ease in the darkness, the tiger hunts at night, at one with the silence, the sound of silence, fearing nothing. Okay, so the sign, the sound is the feminine, the light is the masculine. Like I would say Metatron and Michael. Metatron is more the feminine energy, Michael's the masculine energy. So taking in your wild darkness, allowing lunar forces to soothe and heal our spirits, the sensuality and receptivity and devotion are all heightened at the midnight hour. Again, the 11th hour coming up here right before midnight. Take in your wild darkness, allow the lunar forces to soothe and heal our spirits, our sensuality, our receptivity. Receptivity, receiving and devotion are all heightened at the midnight hour. Spend time in silence, drinking in the potent calm. There is nothing to fear in the stillness, 
except the awakening of your own power. So again, Trinity, try, nigh, T-Y. Try your show of power and your gratitude. So at 124 is the magician and the 24 of the Queen of Wands, passionate, strong, and sensual. When overstimulated, and this is still for the tiger from the book, the tiger is usually passionate, strong, and sensual, but when they're overstimulated, like when you feel ungrounded, it was saying the Trataka, to gaze at a candle. And then twin flames here don't work. They master, as shamans, the dark side of the moon and surrender to try, show their power and gratitude, magic and the phoenix rising, ashes, twin towers to twin flames, healing and forgiving and letting go when you feel you have little to give, that it fills your tank and gives you peace of mind at 127, which is the magician and the ace of wands, that third energy, the third flame. So there's your read for you. Very profound, I felt. And so here I'm going to pull some cards from our new, my new decks. I'll pull from the animal spirit deck, but first I'm going to pull from the, from the Tarot of Dreams. Let's see what comes up for you guys. So we'll do these two decks for today, see how it goes. Take another deep breath. So I find when I get ungrounded, I talk too fast and I get, I guess my Libra comes out because I have Libra Mars and Libra um, Mercury. So I start, I feel like I'm getting like flighty, like I'm, you know, I, I can't remember what I'm about to say and then everything I say is like piecemeal. So just knowing when you're ungrounded, the best way to come back to that is, I guess, either stare at a flame or extend your love to somebody which we know that. But do you know that when you're in the midst of feeling ungrounded or feeling um, sad or feeling mad or whatever your trigger is? All right. I had a really nice dinner last night. Um, my daughter's friends, whose birthdays were both this month, I had told them I would take them both out to dinner, so they called me last minute yesterday afternoon and said, you want to get out tonight? So we had went to a, a restaurant we'd never been to before. It was Moroccan. So Morocco, Morocco may be coming up. And everything was delicious. I have leftovers too, so I'm kind of excited. And I, I never drank, but I had half a, half a glass of wine. It was a bring-your-own bottle um, restaurant, so I brought some for the girls because I knew they'd want to have a glass of wine. So um, it was a very lovely dinner, you know. And it, they, oh, they always make me feel so loved. You know, they're so unjudgmental or non-judgmental, however you want to say the word. Um, but I just, I just want to extend that to you because sometimes I feel I just want to be around the younger generation because they're so open-minded and loving no matter what you say, you know, and they're, and they're, like I said in my read earlier too, it's like the younger generation stepping up to the plate to support the twins. So here is the, um, oh, there we go. All right. So we have the eight of coins, which is of course focus on, focusing on work being creative. We have the Virgo energy there and the earth, the um, sun rather. And of course the eight of pentacles is very much that Virgo energy. But we have the sun as well. And remember, it's reminding me of the safety pin, my diagram that I made, you know, several years ago about um, the safety pin and the sun, you know, the feminine is the um, receiver of the sun energy that she the pin opens up, she is the pointy side of the pin that receives the sun, then the sun goes through her into the bottom of the pin in the circles, goes into the masculine circle at the bottom, there's two circles at the bottom of the pin, and then goes into the back of the pin, which is the masculine, and of course the top of the pin is the housing. And so when she's filled up in her tank, the pin vacuums closed, right? So the pin is closed. And when once the masculine takes the energy over on his side and uses up the energy, the pin then loses its vacuum and then opens again and there's where the feminine needs to go out and collect more sun again so that uh, for some reason i was supposed to tell you that again because i was coming up with this card so maybe the mass is very busy at work being very creative starting something new and he needs you to go out in the sun and fill up your tank again and not only just 
getting the sunlight, but being happy and, and outside and just having some fun that help that, that helps him then re-energize and get his stuff done. So again, the Virgo energy and the sun, and that can reference the sun as well, right? The Christ energy and the masculine energy. So we have that card. We also have the ace of coins. So it's very much about the earth energy, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. Okay. And those no, new beginnings of offer of a new life, an offer of a loan, an offer of time, money, and energy, whatever it may be for you. It's a big offering. It's in the traditional meaning, the ace of pentacles is that perfect life of contentment. And there's the, the Atlas energy, the weight of the world. He's carrying it. And he's carrying it easily too, right? Because he's keeping, keeping it light and profound all at the same time. Light and sound. <laughs> I love how they bring up the profound being the same as the sound and the Metatron and Michael and the light and the sound. It's like the light, it's, instead of the light and the dark, it's the light and the sound and then the dark is actually the third energy. There's always a trinity aspect to everything, right? The mother, father, and the child. There's always a, a trigger in the triangle. There's always the three is always a third, a third party, or it can be um, someone who's feeling left out. It can be that third party interference, whatever it is. It's like that dark third energy, but it's not dark. It's, it's showing you yourself, the shadow side of yourself, or it's triggering you to expand yourself into a higher vibration. As the two... You can only go so far. It's the third that actually expands you outside yourself, like the, the phi versus the pi. So the pi is the circle with the line through it, but within the lines. The phi draws outside the lines. It expands outside of itself past the 3D into the 5D. So the bottom of the deck here is, actually the next coin is the left out in the cold energy here. And here's that energy of someone offering like abundance and new life to those who are out in the cold. So it's very much about the twins helping others and finding and being creative in the way that they do it. And there's the truth coming up next, okay? And the king of wands, all right? So here's the masculine stepping up in his power, triumphing and being in his truth. Oh, there's the queen of swords, okay? Right, it's like he's the shaman She's the truth teller, right? She's the communicator. He's the, um, like the, the passionate manifester. Working as that team. Very much fire and air here. And fire and air, you know how quickly they can expand. Oh, and the next card is the lovers. And the high priestess. And there is the uh, six of coins. Look at that. The, six, the palace of coins is the home. It's all about the abundant home. The place that you treasure. Alright, so this is the lovers in their psychic knowing. The high priestess, right? The secret lovers with their psychic abilities being in their knowing. And then the, the balance here, the offering here, there's, that's Libra, isn't it? And we have Taurus here and the moon. And the moon's here too. So just talking about the moon as being that third energy that needs to expand the lovers. Expanding the lovers with their psychic abilities and the knowing how to balance and share, being charitable to others, and making the world their home, right? This is heaven on earth, the abundant home that the whole world is their home naturally because of the love between them. And there's always that third energy coming in to expand more and more and more. This is beautiful, you guys. All right, so we started out with the work and being creative, all right, telling the truth. This is an offer of a new life after finding a new passion, helping others, being charitable, or perhaps settling out with debts that were needed to be paid and coming into their truth or offering the truth to the King of Wands. Maybe he's offering truth to himself or the people who needed help in helping them. Actually, they offered truth back to him, him coming into his power with the Queen of Swords. 
and then the lovers and the high priestess sharing the abundant home, which is the world, peace on earth, heaven on earth. And then the bottom of the deck being the devil. And this is that third party that triggers you, right? This is, the, this is just the Hebrew symbol for the devil. And then here we have the, um, is that Capricorn? I always forget. I'm dealing with planet symbols and astrological symbols, so I always forget. You have to bear with me. Forgive me. Um, I know this at the, yeah, this Capricorn. I just wanted to make sure because I'm not that familiar with the planetary symbols. So, yeah, so we have very much Capricorn. Of course it's Capricorn because it's the devil. I'm not even thinking. All right, so this is all about Capricorn here. Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. And caging yourself here. But this was the underlying energy going away. But it's like the trigger, right? Is your codependencies and your shadow side. And beneath that is the Ten of Cups. So going from what you thought was the perfect happiness, emotional fulfillments, the loyal friend with the dog, right? That perfect white picket fence house and family. Or was it, right? This is Mars and then uh, Pisces energy here. You know, the family, Pisces at the end of the, uh, the horoscope, they're the dream weavers because they're half in this world, half in another world already. And then the Mars energy of the initiation to get people going, to be happy, you know, and keep moving, you know, because energy needs to move. The abundance here and then seeing the shadow side of it, of yourself. And are you being real or is this fake? And how is it perfect if you're not even allowed to be yourself within this environment? And there comes the shadow and caging yourself within this supposed happy place. So that's where we were leaving from and then coming in together with the twins here, which is really beautiful energy here. Okay. I love these cards too. They're really pretty. Okay. So I will, I'm going to read you the palace of coins. I'm going to read you this first card too. All right. Cause it's very earthy read. I'll read you the eight and the palace. Eight of coins. All right, so in this book, again, the tar the Tower of Dreams, the Eight of Coins says, slow, steady work, a labor-intensive project, a sincere and committed effort. A wizard or scientist, depending on your point of view, sits in his library busily constructing an orrery, a clock device, a clockwork device that replicates the relative movements of the solar system. The man has a goal and is working slowly and steadily to achieve it. This is not a time for impetuous moves or, grand, or grandiose schemes. Instead, now is the time to buckle down and get one's hands dirty, doing all the tedious but necessary tasks. I can attest to that since I was doing computer stuff yesterday, which is not fun for me, that can no longer be avoided. He is carefully following his written plans and delicately fitting together the jewels and gears that will make this orrery runs smoothly and accurately. Although he seems to be quite the expert, we know that he is still an apprentice rather than a master because despite his capability, he still requires an instruction manual to build his machine. He must also rely on seemingly supernatural inspiration as evidenced by the coins and crystals which suggest that the man-made mechanical components are driven by some undefined energy that lies outside the scientist's direct, direct control. Thus, the machine is essentially a mystical one that straddles the physical world of science and reality on one hand and the mystical world of magic on the other. In a reading, this card describes a labor-intensive project. This is not time to look for instant gratification, but rather the rewards that come from a sincere and committed effort. And then for the palace... The Palace of Coins says, the other palaces are fun places to visit, but the Palace of Coins is where we live. Here is where we feel safe and secure, where we can tend to our earthly needs, where we can be kings and queens of our own castle. Here also we can experience the four elemental energies as fully human attributes, the intellectual or owl, the impetuous, the deer, and here's the deer coming up, right? The deer in the headlights, the impetuous. So we had innocent come up around the deer, but also impetuous because they're inexperienced. The moody frog and the mundane moose. 
The mountains in the background are more distant than the Palace of Wands. The dreams and goals remain, but home is always waiting when we need a rest from the journey. Okay, so now we're going to pick from the um, Animal Spirit deck. Let's see what they have to say. From the animal spirit deck, let's see what they have to say. The dolphin. I love him. He's so friendly. And you know that the dolphin's fin is curved. That's how you can identify them from the porpoise. The dolphins are more friendly than porpoises. They're more serious. So this is all about socializing. And we have the feminine triangle at the top, which has to do with water. And we're going to read about the dolphin. But the fish is also coming up, and that's very congruent, right? They both live in the same place, in the water. But there's moon energy around this fish. And they look like a bigger fish. They don't look like a tiny fish. And the dolphin's very friendly to everyone, right? Because the dolphin's a warm-blooded animal, not a fish. So, there's another couple who want to be seen. Actually, there's three couples who need to be seen, just like um, Love Actually and Valentine's Day, like there's different stories going on. <laughs> oh, there's one more story going on. Oh, it's so funny. They're giving me four different stories. All right, and then the bottom of the deck. All right, so this is your first story, the dolphin and the fish. The bottom of the deck is the turtle, right? Turtle's very slow, but they win the race, right? They're very consistent. And there is the water again, a lot of water energy coming up the turtle. They're very loving and, and hardworking, and they take their time, right? They're unmovable. I'll get there when I'm ready. <laughs> you have to listen to the turtle right now, right? The panther may be intimidating and trying to push the turtle, like, go, go, go. And he's like, look how he's trying to hold him off. No, I'll get there when I'm ready. <laughs> look at this. This is so funny. Oh, my gosh. Look what is behind the turtle. This is what the turtle's dealing with and who they're putting off. Like, no, I'll get there when I get there. We got the panther. We got the tiger. And the crocodile. Look at that. How much more intimidating can that be? Well, I'll let you know. The tarantula is there too. This is the intimidation behind the turtle who's then saying, I'll get there when I get there. <laughs> you guys all got to wait. If you're going to eat me, you're going to have to eat me because... I'll get there when I get there. So it's a really cool energy that's coming up there in the underlying energy. Very intimidating, but not allowing anything to intimidate them. So here we have the two fish, which I'm definitely going to read, okay, because they're the first two cards, and it's very watery. The second two couples are the hyena and the vulture. And neither, both of them look, you know, both of them, you know, they're not the friendliest of animals, right? But they're both feeling, looking kind of humbled, right? Whereas normal, like the hyena would be making fun of you and, and, um, and being sneaky or stealing something from you. You know, the vulture is going to do the same thing from another perspective, like the two sides of the same coin. The vulture is going to scoop down and, and take the leftovers. Well, so is the hyena because they don't want to do any of the work. They're scavengers, you know. They want to collect the residual of the hard work of others. But it's like these two are coming together because these are, uh, can be a couple as well, right? But they're feeling humbled by each other because they can't get one over on the other because they're the same. And it's like they're both humbled by each other. It's like they're all of a sudden their energy is neutralized and they know they belong together. How weird is that? And here we have the dark side of the moon too, right? The dark and the light. So even the dark has a match. So the next couple that comes up is the wolf and the rabbit. The wolf, the rabbit's not talking to the wolf. <laughs> and the wolf is like, what did I do? What did I do? And the rabbit's like, you know exactly what you did. <laughs> I'm going. They're so funny. And they are both earth. 
Now the vulture and the hyena, one is, one is um, fire and one is water. Excuse me, fire and air rather. These two are fire and air, but that's still a match because fire and air go together well. And here we have both earth signs again. So earth signs should coming up a little bit stubborn here. You know? Or perhaps the rabbits just pretending like they don't know anything. They're just standing there like dum de dum de dum doing their thing and the wolf is like Why you why is your back turned to me? I'm right here. Like, what's going on? Are you gonna turn around or what? You know I can eat you, right? <laughs> you know you know, talk to me now? It's so funny the two energies that are coming up here. All right, and then the last two pair, we have the spider and the starfish. And they both have those kind of, you know, energies of extending themselves out. And here we have, again, the feminine energy of earth and water. And they also match. Again, so they're bringing up like two sides of the same coins, right? They're very different, but yet the same. The starfish just is the star, right? They get all the attention. But the spider goes to a very reclusive place, you know, their den where all of their, you know, their food, they keep their food and it's very secretive. They don't want anyone else to get there. Star just, you know, is bright and shiny and they, they're happy for anyone to see them. So it's like the two sides of the same coin. The polarities of the star and the, you know, that's like that deep Scorpio energy of going within. The star and the spider. But I think the spider thinks there's something fishy about the star. There's a lack of trust there because they're so far away from them. They're polarized, right? So, and it's, if you have a lack of trust, it's because there's a lack of trust within yourself because it's your other. So let's go back to the, the, the friendliest couple that we had, the first ones, which is that twin energy of the dolphin and the fish. Two sides of the same coin. This is the dark fish. This is the light fish. <laughs> right? And they're both in the water. They're both like fish. So let's, we're going to read these two to see how they, how they match up and why they're coming up as two sides of the same coin. All right, so the dolphin, which of course we all love, Let's see what the water is. Where's the water? All right, so here's the dolphin. The dolphin's innately intelligent, healer, light, and blessings. The gifts of the dolphin are beyond our, what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle, and enjoy working on the level of spirit. It's easier for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day and thus your life. This card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. So when they're in balance, they're active healers, strong spiritual practice, but when they're out of balance, they underestimate their own power. In order to come back into balance, they need to be with like-minded spirits, right? So come to come into balance, that's like the twin energy because their cure is always to be like-minded spirits, like themselves. So then we have the fish. Let's see what the fish says. What are you, fish? There we are. The fish is restlessness, change of focus, and lost in the current. The fish loves to be subsumed in life's current. Nothing pleases it more than movement, movement, and more movement. The roaming lifestyle of the fish may be exhilarating for a while, but usually leads to weariness and slippery relationships. With all the possibilities out there in the vast waters, the fish becomes lost without clear goals and intentions. Spend some time with the lunar forces, dear fish, as the peace and calm of the moon will soothe your soul. So when in balance, they're adaptable and they travel well. When they're out of balance, 
they can be distracted and change their mind often. To bring into balance, set a small goal and accomplish it. Okay. So again, this is the one who's scattered and the one who's, who's not scattered, right? The dolphin's very happy to be intuitive and the fish is very scattered and unintuitive. And it's like bringing those two polarities together to balance each other. So in order for the fish to set a small goal and accomplish it, they may need a partner. And the dolphin needs a partner to come back into balance, so wouldn't that be the per perfect partnership? So yes, I love the little, part, the little four part partnerships that are coming up. So again, there's all sorts of partnerships, the hyena and the vulture, right? They're both scavengers. And I'm sure you'll, I'll read these cards at some point in the journey here. And then we have the wolf and the rabbit, right? The wolf, this is kind of, the wolf is really distracted, kind of like the fish, right? Because they're very busy and nervous. <laughs> this also could be a rabbit who's afraid of the wolf. And the wolf is like, why are you afraid of me? <laughs> like, I'm not going to eat you. And the rabbit's like, oh, but you're so scary. So it's, uh, there's, you know, multiple ways of interpreting these, these things. <laughs> okay. And then we have, again, the spider and the starfish, right? The recluse, the recluse and the star. Okay. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I do. I'm going to pull an energy deck card too, just to wrap it up. Because there's a lot of information coming in there. So just in one... In a one-card effort, what are we taking away here overall from our energy deck? Again, attachment came up. Let go of attachments. You don't want to resist either, but you, right now we're focusing on letting go of attachments that don't serve us. Taking off the mask, being who you authentically are, the five of the Hierophant, freedom, change, expansion, all of that stuff coming up for you. And then taking a step back, right, when you get triggered. Take a step back. Have quiet time by yourself. The 29 is being present in the moment, the now moment. Here we have the light and the dark again, the dark side of the moon. And then the underlying energy being the contract. Okay. You know, balance of the contract. Is it, is it over yet? Have you completed your contract? Is it balanced yet? So it, that comes in with the divine timing as well. It's all about balance, okay? So this is your message overall. This is what we talked about before in the beginning. It's all about letting go of attachments. And what I talked about too, the best way when you're being triggered by anything in your life is to extend your love out to others, but also to go within and have time by yourself. Okay, first time by yourself, right? To become, to come back into you and then extending your love out to others who will cheer you up because they can be there for you as well. And again, it's all in the contract. It's divine timing about balance. When things come into balance, it's automatic. The energy shifts. Okay? So make sure you drink your water, get your rest, get your joy, get your nature. And I'm going to try to get some of the astrological signs done today. So we're going to be starting over with the astrological signs going forward into May. Okay? Starting with Aquarius. Okay? Rise and be love. It's 1331. And I will see you later. Have an amazing day, you guys. Bye.